Hey friend, welcome back to this next episode inside the Cultivating and Growing Board Relationships. I am so pumped for this one. This one is going to be fun. It's going to be the best. Now, I will say, if you're not a fun kind of person, you don't like to have fun, you just skip this episode. Or, probably for you, it'd be good for you to really pay attention to this. Because we are going to talk about just the enjoyable things, non-technical sides of things we do at the church board level. Now, why do we do this? The whole issue of talking about having fun, um, it's going to yield you huge dividends when you're in the board setting and you have to talk about tough stuff. You know, you do the routine stuff normally, uh, and normally things just sail right on through. But every so often, you have some tough things to deal with, spiritually, financially, and otherwise. And if you haven't had fun, apart from that, those get to be very stressful times. So we're going to dig into this and just see what kinds of things could you do as a pastor and a board, frankly, to have fun together. Number one, how about any golf or a game or a goof off? I'm a Northern Iowa alum, so yes, I'm wearing the purple and gold right now. And although the Missouri Valley, is the conference we play in, is not, you know, doesn't match up uh, frequently with uh, Big Ten, Big 12, SEC, uh, Big uh, Pac-10, you know, I mean, I'll, I'm going to tick somebody off. But I, I, I'm intending to tick a, a few people off here. Do you know, do you realize the Missouri Valley, uh, Northern Iowa, knocked off Kansas in the, in the basketball tournament a couple years ago? Yes, we did. You realize we played pretty tough against the Big Ten and Big 12. Um and for you SEC people who think the sun rises and sets in the SEC and you Clemson and ACC people, I want you to know the Big Ten, if you really calculate, has been able to play up at or above those levels all the way through. Now, what did I just do there? See, I, I was having some fun with you. It was designed for some of you to sit on the other end and say, wait, 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 Big Ten doesn't do this, or wait, wait, wait. A little school like Northern Iowa doesn't do, that's what it was designed to do. See, we weren't talking about the technical, we're just having some banter back and forth. We're, we're, we're going to play, we're going to have fun together. And if you'll do that as a pastor and a board member, you're going to see great dividends from that. Now, the reality is, you've got to be intentional about this. You've got to be relaxed, or if you're not a relaxed person, you're going to have to learn to relax. You can talk about anything when, when you're getting together to be away from the board. Now, you can talk church stuff, sure, because church is our life. But you can talk sports. If you want. If you dare, you could talk politics. I would suggest you probably make sure you're fairly close to the same lev, uh, spot on the politics side. Uh, you can talk personal. You, you see what I'm talking about? You can just talk about anything you want when you're in the golf game or goof-off mode. It doesn't have to be sports. It could be activities. Could be connectedness individually or as a group. Now, again, why do this? Pastor, board member, back and forth. You know, it, it goes both ways. Sometimes board members can be intimidated by the lead pastor. Sometimes the lead pastor can be intimidated by board members. But when you do this, when you step aside from the board meeting and do things that are fun, you're going to see that this communicates that you're a real person because you really do golf, game, goof off. It builds relationship, builds trust, helps you navigate through the times when, um, tough times when, when you've actually played together, you've actually enjoyed relationship together aside from the work involved at the board level. So number one, golf, game, or goof off. Number two, who wants to do lunch, breakfast, dinner, dessert, or coffee? I love all of them. You know, I've got an acquaintance of mine, a business acquaintance of mine, that literally he takes the approach that he does no eat and meet. So if you want to do business with him, you meet him in the office. And uh, now, he, I will say, the guy's very successful, has made a pile of money. But he's missing a great opportunity to build relationship. And particularly, if you're in the ministry, if you're in church, you can't allow this guise of efficiency. Okay, meet me in my office because it's more efficient in terms of time and all this kind of stuff. It's a huge missed opportunity as a pastor to miss the opportunity to break bread with people. I mean, clearly, Scripture talks about the importance of meeting from house to house and fellowshipping and eating together, how important that is. A lead pastor cannot miss the opportunity to be with people 
particularly over times like lunch or breakfast or dinner, or dessert, coffee, that, and so on. Uh, honestly, what I would be doing if I were you, I would be setting up regular times to meet with individual board members. So, if, for example, if you've got seven board members, now you don't have to do this every week, but I'm, let's just say seven board members, and uh, say you take one a month, and you're going to go do something like this with them. Now, this is not the, the play piece we talked about in the first part. This is setting up time to, to dine together, to be together once a month. Um, and, and if you do that uh, over seven months, you know, you're, you've taken care of all seven uh, guys on the board. Now, uh, if you're meeting with someone of the opposite sex on your board, and again, uh, you want to talk to that board member in their orientation, uh, that if you're a male as a pastor and they're female, you want to talk to them about the fact that you, you can't do all things with her like you do with the guys. So in their case, you get together with their spouse. So maybe you and your spouse go out with them and their spouse, or, or you and your spouse go out with them, or you go out with them and their spouse. But the whole point is either three or four of you together, not just two of you. And obviously, that's just good principle. Uh, it's called the Billy Graham rule, and don't meet with a female alone, but including a board member. But you can do these times with them. Now, what, what are you doing in these meetings? You're having fun. You're laughing. You can be serious. But those are important times together. Also, uh, you know, I'm guessing you probably like to have snacks at your board meeting. Do regular birthday cakes. I mean, you want to nibble away, you can have the birthday cakes. Celebrate those birthdays, but just be careful that if you start this, you don't forget. All you need is some board member to get ticked off because you missed their, their July birthday on July 8th, you know, and you had your meeting on July 15th and you didn't celebrate it and they get themselves all worked up. You can't have that. And board member, if that's you, relax. Don't let that kind of thing bug you. Or if it's your birthday, bring the cake. So <laughs> there you have it. The whole point is enjoy meals, coffee, dessert together, and you'll see good things happen in your board meetings because you've taken time to do that aside from the board meeting. Next, Christmas party at my house. I love that. Yeah, I get it. The holiday pace is hectic, but this group is a key leadership constituency of for you and the church. Now, if, if this is this seldom happens, but if your house is too small, again, seldom happens. People get too critical. Oh, my house is big enough. I not big enough. I don't have four thousand square feet. Well, listen, almost. I mean, no people don't. So whatever your house is, pack them in. I mean, we're talking about fun, fellowship, Christmas party. The issue is to be together and to have fun together. All right, and if it doesn't work at your house, that's fine. You know, have a board member that they can do it at their house. You don't have to be at a mansion to have a Christmas party. The whole point is take time with your board, away from the board meetings, to celebrate a uh, Christmas party. Uh, and uh, if you and your spouse are not cooks, and you're not oriented that way, then cater in a Christmas meal and build it into the church budget for the church to pay for it. And if you choose to, I've, I've seen this, works very well. You can invite staff or key leaders as well. It frankly builds the team when you do this. So Christmas party, celebrate. It's absolutely critical that you do this. I might note to you that what I found worked well is uh, in November, December, we combined our monthly meetings and we tried to get everything done in November in preparation for the new year. And then December, rather than have the meeting, we did the Christmas party. Might be thought for you as well. So, Christmas party at my house. Number four, post-Easter celebration. Here's the drill. Easter is the biggest Sunday of the year. Sometimes Christmas will run close to it. But I mean, Easter's Easter. After Easter, you know, sometimes you can have a letdown. Of course, you always have a, a high. And I can tell you, I've worked with pastors long enough to know that the greatest day in the year for me to call and talk to a pastor is on the Monday after Easter because, I mean, they're flying high. Of course, the worst day in the year to call a pastor is on the Monday after the Sunday after Easter where they've all fallen and they said, where did everybody go? But when Easter happens, listen, celebrate it. Gather all the players together. Do a dessert night over at your house or one of the board members' house. Recap all the good that the Lord did. Do not assume that board members know everything that happened. You think they do. You think because they're there, but I'm telling you, it is your job as the pastor to 
communicate those good things that happen to board members. And board members, it's your job to share with each other those good things that happen. Don't, um, don't skip things that you consider small. So your pastor, your board member, you see something that happens, don't skip that. You need to say something about it. Celebrate it. Everything the Lord did on Easter was big and deserves celebration. Whether it's the stuff in the sanctuary auditorium or the stuff in the kids area, you need to celebrate. You need to pull people together to celebrate that. Post-Easter celebrations are huge. Next, back to school party. Man, every August, I would be pulling people together, meet to cheerlead all the players together, get the youth department, get the children's department together, get the board members there, the staff there, to cheerlead on the start of the new year. When you do that, you're going to build great encouragement in the volunteers. The board, the staff, everyone is going to say, hooray, I'm glad I'm part of a church that celebrates school, celebrates children, celebrates youth, and, and make it truly a party. I mean, make it fun. And uh, you, I've seen people do this on a Wednesday night. I've seen others do it uh, in their fellowship hall. Uh, others have done it in a Sunday morning. Sometimes churches will have their school superintendents in or the high school principal, middle school, elementary. Just think of doing something that actually celebrates. And uh, again, it's not in the boardroom, but you want board members feeling all that goes on with that. So what's your takeaway for this? I'm telling you, if you'll invest in fun in order to strengthen spiritual decision-making, you're going to see good things happen at the church. Don't take yourself too seriously, whether you're a pastor or a board member. Listen, life's too short. Enjoy being together with the board members and the pastor. Enjoy doing things outside of the boardroom. Eat, do dessert, drink coffee together, go to the ball games together, go to the concerts together. Uh, enjoy those times away when you can build relationship and that will strengthen you in the boardroom. Celebrate the greatest spiritual days of the year together, along with all those fun things, and you're going to be absolutely amazed how the pastor and the board will coalesce to move the mission and the vision of the church forward. I hope you found this uh, episode uh, helpful and valuable and fun, and I'm really going to look forward to uh, talking with you in the next one. Make it a great one today, and be blessed.